Map reading might seem like an elementary skill or like something you can do sitting on your couch looking at your smartphone, but these topographical maps we're about to introduce are gonna cover the world in a lot more depth. This skill, reading a topographical map and translating it to the world around you, is the foundation for every element of backcountry navigation. We'll teach you about different types of maps, how to interpret the colors and symbols on the map, and how to match it to the landscape around you. There's a few different types of maps you'll encounter. The first is the road map. Now, as we all know, road maps are really useful for driving around, but in terms of hiking in the backcountry, it's really not gonna give you enough detail of information. So we're not gonna use these at all. The next type is a trail map. And these are where people tend to get kind of messed up or in a little bit of trouble. Trail maps are usually available at state or county parks. And you can see on this map that it's got a little bit of a sense of what the land is actually doing. It's good to realize how the trails are laid out, but it doesn't actually give you quite enough detail to really navigate. Also, it doesn't really show us much about the scale and we don't know what the source for this map is. The maps we'll be featuring in this class are the United States Geographical Survey topographical maps. What I mean by topographical is how we represent the three-dimensional world around us into a two-dimensional map. Now, the United States Geographical Survey started mapping the entire United States back in 1879 and the project was completed in 1992. Currently, there's a number of other map makers that are creating topographical maps. And sometimes these maps actually have more updated trail information. So they're great to use. Don't feel like you have to use a USGS map. However, a thorough foundation in these maps is gonna enable you to read any other type of topographical map you might run into. All USGS maps share the same following features. Some of the features on these maps are the title. You'll see the title of the map in the top right-hand corner and in the bottom right-hand corner. Up on the top, it'll also say seven and a half minute series. What that refers to is the amount of earth that's represented in this map. You can also find 15 minute series that use a different scale if you wanna look for a variety in detail. Right underneath, the title of the map in the bottom right corner is going to be the date that this map was made and if it was revised. You can see that this map was made in 1988 and revised in 1994. The reason we want to pay attention to the dates that our maps were created is because man-made features tend to change really quickly. So if your map is 30 or 40 years old and you're trying to follow a trail that's marked on it, you might wanna be aware that that trail may have changed since this map was created. Around this area, you'll see a man-made feature key, which just shows how this map is gonna illustrate roads or highways or whatever else might be featured on it. Moving over, you'll see quadrangle location. A quadrangle is just the description of this shape. A lot of times we'll refer to this map as a quad. So you can see the outline of the state of California and then a little darkened square where this quadrangle represents. This map's got a great add-on to that where it shows the adjacent quads. So if you are planning a longer route that might touch more than one quad, you know exactly which maps you need to pull for that. The scale on this map is 1 to 24,000, which means that one inch on the map represents 24,000 inches in our everyday life. This scale shows a lot of detail and is represented both in kilometers, miles, and even down in feet and meters. You can also get scales of 1 to 62,000 or even 1 to 12,000, depending on the level of detail you want. If you were to go up to 1 to 62,000, then you're gonna get a little bit less detail, but it might enable you to carry less maps on your trip, which can mean less weight. This map has a north arrow. Um, every USGS topo map is north-oriented, which means that the top of the map is north. 
And then all of this fine print down here in the corner just refers to the datum that this map is representing. The datum refers to the specific scientific representation of the Earth that this map is based on. If you're not using a GPS, then it doesn't really matter. If you are using a GPS, you'll just need to make sure that the GPS is using the same datum that's represented here on your map. Also along the margins of the map, you'll see latitude longitude points and universal transverse mercator points. And both of those things are just ways for us to pinpoint our location, to communicate it to other people or to devices like our GPS. Sometimes in the margins of the map, you'll see the name of the map that goes right here. Um, and this map just represents it down on the bottom instead of having it be on the corner. Getting into the meat of the maps. Now, the first time many people look at these maps, they get a little bit overwhelmed by all of the different colors and weird symbols. We're gonna break those down right now and make them pretty simple for you to understand. The first color that we all notice, and probably the most obvious one, is blue. Blue refers to water, just like you were thinking. Um, the blue marks on this map represent lakes or ponds, blue lines will be rivers or creeks, and you might also have dashed blue lines, and those represent seasonal water sources. So a creek that maybe doesn't run in the middle of July, but is prominent more towards the beginning of summer. Sometimes you'll see dotted blue areas that look kind of like lakes or ponds, and those represent glaciers or permanent snow fields. The other really prominent color is green. Green represents vegetation, but it goes a little deeper than that. When the project to map the United States was first started, it was commissioned by the armed forces. So the green represents areas where you could successfully camouflage a platoon of 40 men. So green doesn't always mean that it's a really dense forest. It could mean low scrub or anything that you could play a really good game of hide and seek in. The white areas represent places where you couldn't necessarily camouflage a big group of people. And usually the white areas are gonna be in more steeper or higher elevation places. The last really noticeable color on the maps is brown. And those are our contour lines. A contour line represents a line of equal elevation across the map. And so that's how you can tell where your map is going uphill, where it's going downhill, where the peaks are, where the valleys are. You can tell a lot from these brown contour lines. Contour lines can look confusing and overwhelming at first, but don't worry, the rest of this section is heavily dedicated towards understanding and translating contour lines into your everyday world. Another prominent color is black. Black refers to the man-made features on the map. So you'll see a bunch of dotted black lines that represent trails, or you might see little black squares that represent buildings, double black lines for roads, and again, the road classification is down next to the title. Here, there's a dam marked in black, and it even says concrete dam right next to it. And these black features are the ones that we're really looking out for when we take note of the date on the map, because man-made features are going to change much more quickly than, say, a mountain or a lake. Now you might also be noticing um, some splotchy green marks on the map. Um, these like more speckly type of green areas are just transition zones between areas of heavy vegetation and areas that might be a little bit more sparse. We've covered all of the most common symbols that you'll run into on topographical maps. You might encounter region-specific symbols that we haven't covered here, but they'll be pretty self-explanatory. The key to successfully reading your topographical map is understanding contour lines. Contour lines are all those crazy brown lines all over the map. A contour line represents equal points of elevation. So every piece of land that that contour line touches is at the same elevation. Now, in between each of those brown lines is what we refer to as the contour interval. On most maps, this contour interval is gonna be 40 feet. 
If you have a map with a different contour interval, it'll be listed in the bottom right hand corner underneath the scale bar of your map. Keep in mind when you're looking at these lines that it's 40 vertical feet of elevation change. It has nothing to do with linear distance. You might notice as you look at your contour lines that some are actually labeled and are a darker brown than other lines. These are called index contours and they're set every 200 feet just to make it easier for us to count elevation, gain, and loss. If you're in an area with very little topographical change, then the map maker might actually put in what we call supplementary contour lines, which will be a dashed brown line at half of whatever the contour interval on that map is. So if I had a supplementary contour line in Colorado, it would be set at 20 feet. Contour lines can look confusing and overwhelming on your map, so we'll break it down for you and use this rock as an example. From the lowest point of elevation, I can start drawing contour lines at about six inches up this rock, keeping the lines at the same elevation the entire time. As I move up the rock, it starts to hang out over the top a little bit. We call that an overhang. And what happens when features overhang is that the contour lines merge together. And you can actually see a bunch of different brown contour lines becoming one at that point. Now they'll always resurface as their own individual contour line uh, further down the land feature. Continuing up this feature just about every six inches, once I get to the top, my contour line is going to become a circle. And that marks the peak, the highest point of elevation of my rock. You might notice that moving up features on your map or down features, your contour lines look a little bit like V's. You can make a V with your hands. And then if you flip it on your side, I think it looks a little bit like a Pac-Man guy. So, a way that I use to determine if my contour lines are going uphill or downhill is to have my Pac-Man and it's munching as it goes up and they like to eat peaks. So the apex of my V or the Pac-Man's mouth is going to be moving uphill towards the peak. Now when it moves downhill, it's just getting a good drink of water usually going downhill, the apex of the V pointing towards the valley or the drainage. A great way to visualize how the map is representing the landscape around you is to use what we call Knuckle Mountain. It's going to be a three-dimensional representation of a mountain. We'll draw it on your hand. And then once you flatten your hand out, you'll see the two-dimensional representation of that same mountain. Mastering contour lines is the best way to begin to understand the language of topographical maps. And as you start to apply this knowledge to other topographical maps, maybe of places you've never been, you'll start to come up with your own visualizations of what that landscape looks like, which will be really inspiring as you're planning your next adventure.